Welcome back, everyone. I got to say thank you so much. I love you all for giving me more questions so that I can make more content so that, you know, it helps the channel. I, I got to say I'm grateful to all of you that keep asking me questions that I can actually make videos about. And so the question was asked of me, uh, what do I think of these tiny homes for homeless? And you, I don't I've tried to get in. Uh, some many years ago uh, when I was in Eugene because that was the first place I ever I ever saw them so what what's going on with these tiny homes is that there is this this philosophy it's a it's called housing first okay and with housing first they believe that in order to be able to help somebody get off the streets you got to give them some sort of stabilization some sort of permanent dwelling where they can you know at least have their sanctuary and then just go out into the world so that, that they can, you know, uh, you know, take showers, you know, cook food, you know, do their basics so that they can focus on, you know, turning over that new leaf in life, whether it be getting into drug, uh, drug and alcohol treatment, whether it be finding a job, whether it be finding social security. Now, this is something that came out of the Nordic countries and we're trying to cross apply it here uh, in the United States. One of the first places that, that picked it up was... Um, what was in New York, uh, apparently, if you watch the John DeCarmine, uh, interview, he, uh, we, we actually talk about housing first and, you know, it, the idea originated from the Nordic countries, but they have a completely different, you know, social structure than we do here in America. And so we're trying to take, we're trying to take an, a, 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 an orange and, and sell it off as an apple. And, you know, uh, it's just, it's not working as a, as a society. So that's a little bit of a backstory behind it. Okay. So I'm in Eugene. Uh, this is probably like 2016. Okay. This was, uh, this is the time right after I got out of jail for like 14 days. And, uh, you know, they have, they had this uh, right across from the shelter. They had all these little tiny homes and I asked him, I said, so like, how do you, how do you get into them? Well, the thing is, is that there's usually a lot of requirements and like, you got to have a job or an income or you have to have a sponsor that will, uh, that will put you up in one of those things. And they cost anywhere from like, uh, I think back then it was like a hundred bucks a month, uh, to like $300 a month. And the thing is, is it's no bigger than a closet. Okay, it, it really isn't. It's enough for a a uh, a single bed. Um, there's going to be a ledge uh, right there next to the the back window because you know the the fire. Uh, Marshall, he's going to make sure that there's windows so that you can escape in the event of a fire. Um, now they do run electricity in there. Um, and then, you know, you have access to water and showers, uh, you know, but you got to do your own food and it's so small that you really can't bring a lot of stuff in with you. One of the problems that a lot of people end up having is because when you're out here, you start nesting. And, uh, for those of you that are not females that do not understand nesting, um, nesting is something that you do like women do it right before the the, the baby is born that's why they bleach the whole house and they go through this whole cleaning thing it's called nesting and so homeless actually do nesting as well they they're out for so long they're ready to get off the streets and so they start nesting by collecting things that's why you see so much trash and so much stuff around and you know the the idea and the premise behind it is good um, you know, as far as, you know, being able to offer something. And I think that because, you know, you're getting power and water that you do have to make some sort uh, of contribution. But the thing is, is it's counterproductive to the whole housing first uh, uh, philosophy. But in the, the other thing, you know, as I was looking into the program and as I was, you know, looking around and things like that, uh, one of the things that they were saying is that this is just a stepping stone to get you into a bigger place so that that way they could get as many homeless off the streets as possible. Now, if they took the housing first uh, approach to it, which is, okay, let's build these up. Let's put the homeless in them. Okay, you're going to have to, because there, there, are, there are families that live out here. So you're going to have to figure out something that's going to be big enough for them. But for the most part, you could do these pallet houses. Because, I mean, literally, all it was was just plywood with a, with a tin roof on top. Uh, and, and two windows, one on, one on the side and one in the back. And, and a door to come in. And that's essentially all you're getting with, with uh, two power plugs. Um, you know, and you're, you're not going to be able to bring, like, a burner in there or anything else like that. Because of, uh, you know, fire risk. And, uh, but the thing is, is once, you, once you're to a point where you can start saving money because what you're going to be doing in these programs is now that you've got an income, uh, you got to, uh, 
uh, you know, you got to start saving to get yourself into a place. This is just a, uh, for those that actually have some sort of, of income uh, in stability, it would be a way for them to, to be able to have that while they transition into housing. Now, will that help the homeless problem? Not necessarily, because it's kind of coming in after the fact. It's like, go get a job. I mean, so you spend six months looking for a job because you're being discriminated against uh, for, uh, for uh, 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 you know, being homeless. And then, you know, once you get past those obstacles and you find some low hanging fruit of somebody that will put you to work, now you can all of a sudden get a, a you, you, you can afford to get into one of those places. And then you got to be put on a waiting list because, you know, there are lots of people that are, that are applying and some of them don't even have the money to be able to do it. They're just applying, hoping that they can get uh, some sort of, of uh, you know, recompense or, or something like that to be able to, to, uh, to, to put themselves in the, uh, in one of those dwellings. Because the thing is, is there's probably about in a small little parking lot, there's probably about 20 or 30 of them. And it, it would definitely help the homeless, but you would have to actually use that. If you're going to do housing first, I think that something like that is much easier, much quicker to, uh, to build <coughs> and to bring forward to the average, uh, individual, uh, you know, that's homeless. I think that that would be a good stepping stone versus putting them in like a, a brick and mortar building. Because the thing is, is, is if they destroy that tiny little area or their, their tiny little house, I mean, it probably costs them maybe 150 bucks in wood and materials to, to be able to, to do something like that versus the thousands of dollars it would cost to repair something like uh to you know an apartment building because you know the walls are you know and so you got to bring in all new drywall you got to paint you got to do all this whereas with these homes they're they're so cheaply made but enough to be able to give you the uh the the uh, psychological effect of being housed up, uh, you know, that that would be a much better situation. That way, those that are just not right up here <coughs> and, and really need the help, they can get the help while they're doing the least amount of destruction, which allows the the community to be more efficient with the money that they used. So let's say something like that uh, happened here in Pensacola. I think something they're going to have to build like 2,000 units. Uh, from what I understand, there's 2,000 homeless here. Um, I think the homeless rate is higher here than uh, in most cities. Because most cities, it's only like 1% of your population. But that's also how they keep scarcity going. Because, well, there's just not enough jobs around there. So we don't have to pay you so much because there's people competing for your job. And, you know, these people that, that do have jobs that live out there, well, you know, they're competing for your place. So now we can raise rent. Uh, and it actually has a, a negative effect on uh, on the, the lower echelons of society. But if Pensacola were to you know, take, uh, take some of these parking lots or even some of these vacant lots and just, you know, I, unfortunately they would have to do some clear cutting. So take some, take a lot like this. You could probably put, um, you could probably put 30, uh, 30, 30 little dwellings here. Now there's going to be very little walk space. Um, but you would be able to put, to put 30 people on what is this? Not even a quarter acre. Okay, and so you're going to have the same effect as a dense living, but yet people have their individual, uh, their individual dwellings. Okay, and so you could erect something like this for very minimal cost, get your homeless housed, and then at that point in time, once they're housed under the Housing First Initiative, the 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 ideology is then you start providing them the services that they need to be able to get stable because you know it, it's it's it makes a lot of sense i'll tell you a story of when i was in houston and so at first i you know being in houston one of the things uh you know because I, I i i caught like something like what i have now but it was much worse i had actually had pneumonia and you know my my old man i'm like hey look i i just i, I need i need off the streets i, I need a place to stay and, uh, you know, my stepmom who used to go buy me booze and whatever else when I was like 16 years old, all of a sudden treated me like I was a crackhead because I smoked weed. I'm like, really? And, um, so I, just to prove a point, cause I could have gone back there just like, don't smoke weed. I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. I don't need it. Um, and so just to prove a point, I, um, I, I went 30 days without weed. So it would get completely out of my system. And just to, again, just to prove a point. And uh, I was sleeping under a bridge right there by the Greyhound station. And 
you know, I would have weed offered to me two, three times a day. Uh, you know, here, would you like some? Hey, you want to, you want to toke, you know, da, da, da. And, you know, I was able to turn it down and, you know, it wasn't a big deal to me. And I'm like, nah, I'm good. You know, just to prove a point. And then, you know, I, I went back to, uh, you know, stay with my, my old man after that 30 days. And like in, in about six weeks, I had my own place. Okay. Cause I mean, all I needed was just that housing stability. Okay. So if you have to be outside and you're trying to be clean and sober and you're trying to go get things, yes, some of it is will and, and control, but it's also being exposed to that environment because, you know, I could smell the stuff all over the place, wherever we go. Um, you know, I can smell the molly. I can smell the meth. I can smell the crack that these guys are doing. It, it, it's you, you smell it in the air as you walk by these large encampments. OK. And so like you expect somebody to stay clean and sober while they're in the middle of all that. The average the average homeless person would not be able to do that. OK. That is why, you know, something like the Housing First program actually has results is because once you pull them out of the environment and they actually have the ability to exercise self-control and, and their right of choice, they're going to start making better choices because, you know, they want to have that roof over their head. They want to have those four walls, that safety, that security, that, that, uh, that sanctuary. Okay. And so therefore they're going to start, uh, you know, moving in the right direction. And this is why housing first, uh, is supposed to work. But the way that they do housing first here in America is that they only help those that have checks, which is completely out, uh, c completely counterproductive to what housing first is. So something like these little dwellings would be phenomenal and it would help uh, implica uh, uh, implement the uh, housing first initiative that, that uh, the country has been moving towards and actually house those that really don't have the means to house themselves because some people just may need the time to go through social security because, you know, in San Francisco, one of the things that I had to do or that uh, they do before you get on social security is you're not even allowed to apply unless you get a recommendation from, uh, from a medical professional, whether it be your shrink or whether it be, you know, your physical doctor. And I actually got a recommendation uh, to start that process. And, you know, San Francisco was doing the housing first as well. But the thing is, is because nowhere else does it, what it does is it attracts other homeless. If you are able to implement this nationwide, you will not see the large concentrations of homeless because they will be able to stay within their community and keep their roots within their community and, and keep their network going because they are, um, they're able to, to have, you know, access to, you know, the, the basic amenities of the modern society. So anyways, you guys know how to help the channel, become a subscriber, make sure you share this on all your social media and, uh, everything else is in the description, tip jar, Patreon, all that stuff. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.